Uh, I got this weird desire to buy a bunch of Lego. <laughs> Never had that. I know a guy. <laughs> you know a guy? Man, oh man. So uh, tell us about this journey that, uh, that, that brought you to, the, to, to make this film. And is there hope? Well, I think he's, he's asking if uh, how we got to this spot, I think, to make this film, and then is there any kind of hope? I mean, the, the, as I think I said before, the journey, we looked at, we're looking for something completely different. We really just wanted to do uh, a, a charming, character-driven, you know, observational doc about a modern-day Draper, but then we stumbled into this story, which did seem bigger and more serious, and as doc people, we tend to kind of drift in that direction. And, uh, and so it seemed like a great story to, to try and tell. The hard part was getting uh, the Silicon Valley guys to actually do it, but once they started to, you know, fall into place, it became obvious that we should try and complete it. Is there any hope? I mean, it's a dance. I think it's a, it's a bit of a cat and mouse, you know, uh, in terms of the services that these people can offer you and the extent to which you want privacy and which one of those things you value more. That depends on your age, I think, and your comfort level with this kind of stuff. Um, is there, you know, if you want to have less of this obtrusive um, advertising, it's, it's tricky to get out of it, you know, unless you don't want to use the internet, which we all do, we all use it every day. So it's, uh, it's a tough one. We're kind of stuck with it, I think, as the guy from Stanford said, we're, we're all in it together, basically. And then you mentioned the extraordinary access you got in, in Silicon Valley. How did that happen? I mean, it seems to me that they're exposing themselves in a, in a, in a way that I, you, wouldn't be, you wouldn't expect. No, it's true. I was surprised, but I was really surprised by that. I think they, um, I think they felt in a way that it was it's something on one hand to actually brag about. I think that people like Facebook and Google, that is the nature of their business. They can sort of say, I can offer, let's say you want to sell shoes for a living, but you want to go directly to your audience, well, they need to say, I know where your audience is, and I know when you should, you know, pitch them and so forth. So, um, there's something in it for them, I think, from that perspective. They are really private, typically, and a little bit paranoid, but I think we, we were, I'm sure we were very tedious in, the, in tracking them down and really begging them over the course of a year or so to actually do it. And when uh, Google finally agreed to give us some of their time, not a lot of their time, they all have handlers, and people standing right there, so it's still tricky. But once one of them did, then they all did. And I think, uh, I don't think the doc had been done yet on this subject, so I thought it was like, once one jumped in, they all came in. Yeah, it was exceptionally timely, and it's just surprising to see, uh, to see their candor. Yeah, yeah, no, they're, they're that's funny, they, I was surprised by that too. And did you script all those kids? Are kids actually that bright these days? I uh, you know, we always get asked that question. No, you know what? It's a, uh, it's a school on our street. It's actually my kid's school, but it's not his class. That's the gifted class of grade four. <laughs> <laughs> we also taught grade twos, but they, they all get taught media literacy, and they all, as I'm sure they do here too, and they, um, that particular teacher I thought was extraordinary, and they've been teaching those kids about media for since, since grade one, I think. And those particular kids were, yeah, they're pretty smart, right? They kind of get it. So, I lucked into that. Just yeah. happened to know those people. You're a lucky guy. Lucky Any guy. questions from the audience? I, it's hard to see. Please. At the back, yeah. I have one question. It seemed as if all of the talking heads were sort of white male. And yeah. Yeah. That excludes perspectives that you may have gotten from, from women or visible minorities or other cultures. I don't know. I mean, I think they, those are the people that those companies put forward. So I think with YouTube, you know, Kim Lawson is obviously a woman, and with Affectiva, their president's female. I think with Google and Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, and, and certainly WPP and Publicis, those kind of companies at the moment, they're the people speaking on their behalf are men. And so I don't know. I, I don't know. I, 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 have a t I have a tendency to think that the, the basic message would be the same. You know, because I think their business model is what it is, and I don't think the you know the stakeholders would hire someone that deviated that, and they would redirect their message based on gender or ethnicity and so forth. That's my personal thing. Please. Um, yeah. I have two two uh, questions. One is uh, the first one is uh, we start with branding, but you have to go to Times Square to see see all the signs, and then yeah. you get TV, so you get more people who can watch your brand, and then you can even put an ad on. Yeah. So this way of 
using the data gets you a much bigger audience and you get to show your brand to the people who might be interested in sports or fashion or cars or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, are there, is there still room for the idea in actually, I, now that you've reached these people, does the actual content of the ad, you still need the idea that they talked about at the beginning. And the second thing is, one of the ways that's new in presenting the ad was the, the do-it-yourself uh, material with kids, which is a completely new way of doing things. Um, in, there's been over, over the years, there's been a lot of concern about advertising to kids and putting limits on that. Is there any move or any concern about that uh, with this new form of presentation? I think so. I mean, YouTube was in a lot of hot water last year over exactly that, which I was surprised that they that they did it, because that's where you see it the most, they, those things that are targeted towards kids. So yeah, you're absolutely right. There have always been standards around advertising for kids, and there still are. It's just that regulating advertising on the internet is still in its infancy. And so I think there's plenty of lobby groups that are pushing for it, but I don't think there's a lot of firm regulations around it yet. Certainly, there's lots of privacy laws in Europe that we don't have here in North America. That could be a model. Um, and then on this, you ask a great question actually about the role of creativity in that world. It's, there's a couple of thoughts about it. One is, because a lot of the data, and you hear them talk about it at the end, even though they do have all the information, they don't necessarily 